Hello and welcome to episode 40 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, a cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, Dave and I are talking about that CIOs are increasingly confident that using a cloud-first strategy, analyst firm Gartner has said the global spending on public cloud services will grow to 21.4% through 2018 to a total of 186.4 billion US dollars which is up from 153.5 billion US dollars in 2017 and make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three cloud first tips. Hi Dave it's great to have you on the C-Suite show this week. Yeah I remember when the cloud computing market was just 12 million dollars so it's kind of good to see this, but scary, but it's kind of good to see this coming up from the uh, analysts right now. Yeah, growth has been pretty good. I'll agree with you on that one. So look, a great opening question for us, Dave, is uh, what are your thoughts on the cloud first being a good choice then? I, I think it's okay. I mean, the reality is I think it's been cloud last and cloud no, you know, from a lot of these CIOs the last, uh, you know, 15 years. And so now they're kind of switching. It's very binary. They're going from uh, we hate cloud to we love cloud. And the biggest concern there, if you're going to hate cloud every time I talk about cloud, you're not necessarily opening your, opening your mind to good technological solutions. And if you're going to love cloud each and every time, then you could make mistakes because you're applying cloud where cloud's not necessarily a fit. So kind of both, both little modes scare me, you know, going forward. But the reality is I don't think there's a lot that can go wrong if they're picking cloud computing is really kind of the first choice of how they're going to deploy technology. They're not going to make a mistake that's going to derail things. But the thing is, to me, moving to cloud or moving to traditional architectures or leveraging different kinds of technology is really about levels of efficiency. And so if we're able to basically approach 100% efficiency with leveraging cloud computing, traditional technology, you know, running things on your, your, your wrist, <laughs> I can't talk today, your wristwatch, then um, that's going to be fine, but you really kind of have to approach this level of efficiency going forward and act, really kind of ask the questions, the tough questions, in terms of whether cloud computing is going to be fit or not, traditional computing are our points in between. So I get a little, little concerned when things are so polarized. I think that's probably a better way to put it. Yeah, no, me too. Uh, in your opinion, who really makes that decision that it needs to be a cloud-first strategy? Or is it just down to one person, or do you think there's a collective involved? I think it's boards of directors that are putting pressure on the CIO, you know, to start moving in this direction because, you know, they've, they've read it, you know, 20 times in Forbes and Business Week and, you know, in the airplane airplane magazines, they'll seem to have where carry more weight than they should. And so they put the pressure on the CIO to, in essence, move to, you know, 20 years ago it was outsourcing and moving to PCs and moving to the internet, things like that. Now it's moving into cloud computing. And I think that's all well and good because I think the CIO should move to more um, innovative technological approaches when cloud computing is definitely going to be it. But my concern would be the CIO has to be responsible for making the move and leveraging the technology correctly and applying the technology correctly or else it's just going to be a disaster going forward. And that's not necessarily going to be a binary thing. It's not going to be all cloud or no cloud. It's going to be some cloud leveraged in this direction, leveraged with these security parameters. And it's a very complex solution that we're really kind of talking about. I think that we have a tendency in the IT world of IT to chase the shiny objects, as we talked about many times in this in this show before, but in essence, kind of boil everything down to a binary. You know, suddenly it's binary. Great if you move to you know move to PCs or move to the internet, and it's great if you move to cloud computing. And it's not great if you don't. But the reality is, there's lots of things in this in the in the technological solutions that are in the shades of gray, and so you need to have you know, specialists to look at this, cloud computing SMEs, traditional computing SMEs, size up the portfolio of applications, see which workloads need to move and which workloads don't move. So it's kind of funny, I'm a cloud guy, but I'm making the argument that we should, in essence, look at the applications and ensure that they actually should move to cloud. And if they shouldn't, it's okay to leave them where they are or move them off to another platform. And I, I think that's uh, that's a tougher decision for people to make because it's, you know, not necessarily cool. You know, it's uh, you're not dealing with the cool kids anymore. You're, you're dealing with something that's very complex and something that's very unsavory for lots of folks who are CIOs in the business. But to your point, the boards are making the suggestions. The CIOs are basically reacting under pressure, and that's how they're moving in these directions. 
Yeah, right. And I mean, in your experience with regards to a, a CIO that's been given the direction from the board that, right, we now need a cloud first strategy, you know, what, what would they expect as being their number one pain point around that, Dave, in your, in your uh, you know, experience, many years of experience? I think number one is going to be cost of moving in that direction. So in other words, if the CIO is mandated to move in the cloud and has a cloud first strategy where all net new applications have to be moved in the cloud, they have a migration target. And they're typically going to be five to seven years, which is extremely aggressive for the Global 2000 companies, then um, then you have to go ahead and fund it. And so you're going to have to accord you in the budget. So it's going to have to be at least double what you're spending right now in maintaining and operating the systems to make the migration in the cloud. Eventually, they'll get their money back, but they have to be funded to make those moves. Um, you know, what I'm getting a lot with CIOs is the boards of directors are saying, well, this is going to be a net, net sum game, a net zero sum game. So in other words, we're going to go ahead and ask you to move to cloud. And we think you can fund the move to cloud by the cost savings you're going to get from moving to cloud. And that's, that's ridiculous because you're going to have to spend a huge amount of money initially to go ahead and lubricate the movement into cloud and make that successful. And if you're not able to spend the money, then you're not going to be successful in moving in the cloud. So this is, in essence, a systemic change in the way in which you're doing IT operations. It should be looked at nothing less. And so that means that we're going to have to basically change the way we do app development, database, database admin and development, operations, security, governance, all those sorts of things. And that's incredibly expensive and complex to change. There's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. We have agility better use of IT assets, the, uh, the ability to, in essence, be more competitive with technology going forward. But if we're unwilling to make the investment, let's not even do it. I, I tell that to people all the time. Yeah, as you said, it's very, very complex and, and certainly not for the faint-hearted. And you need the right team. And one of the things that I find is that the, the hiring team, the, the, the line managers and com conversations with the hiring team to making sure that they're, they're getting the right people in to build that team, that they've got the right developers in the back end to, to really facilitate what the project looks like. I mean, that's a real pain point, isn't it, when it comes to a cloud-first strategy, would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, talent is everything. I mean, if you have... Uh, you don't have the, the skills there to be, you can have smart people by the way, but if they don't have the skills in essence to step up and understand how things are gonna work, and there's not as many people around that have those skills that we think about, then you're not gonna be successful. So you have to get outside help from consultants, you have to be able to recruit the right people to, to put them in the right position so they can strategically change the company, you have to do the training to make things happen. You have to you know, basically have all cylinders firing, including the human resources, the technology, and money to make that happen. And, and it's, a, it's a very um, hard thing for businesses to be aware that the fact of the matter is they have to spend some decent amount of money to go ahead and make these changes, to get the talent, get the training, get the technology in place, make things happen, and, and really kind of reduce the risk with the capital outreach that they're going for and make this happen. Yeah, it really is. Reducing that risk, I think, is, and it affects every area of the business cloud. I mean, it's not, we can't just say, oh, it's, you know, we're, we're developing a, a SaaS platform, but it's, it's every aspect of the business from finance right through to HR, you know, the learning curve within HR of, you know, what their needs are, what their requirements are, what does a good hire look like, what's the retention of that hire look like from a point of view of where, where's the learning curve in HR, you know, it's like the whole HR department almost has to be retrained to understand where the focus is from a cloud project, isn't it? Yeah, it does. And I always tell HR departments to reach out to outside recruiters to be able to understand how to go find those people. And, you know, ultimately, um, you know, it's not as self-serving as it sounds because you, you basically have to figure out how to be successful with the amount of money that you have, the amount of time that you have. It's not necessarily the fact that you're spending money on recruiting and training, things like that. You have a time window and that time window can be 10 to 15 years. It's got to be five to seven years. So that's incredibly aggressive for the Global 2000 to basically make a shift into a systemic change in the way in which they did IT for the last 50, 60 years. And so going forward, you gotta help, go ahead and make the strategic investment if you're gonna go ahead and do it. And if you're in for a million dollars, you need to be in for a billion. And that's something that, that people aren't necessarily uh, thinking about. They're thinking about IT as a cost and expense. You know, they're, they're there basically to slow us down, things like that. Well, if IT is looking to change, you're going to have to change them. The only way to change them is capital thinking, creative thinking, innovation, things like that. And that's something that we're not used to doing in lots of the Global 2000 companies out there. 
So very true, so very true. There's a real mindset shift as well, isn't there? Not just a, a training from a, a physicality point of view and, and understanding the, the technical side of cloud, but the, the mindset shift is huge. And it brings us on nicely, actually, to our top three tips. And I think we may have probably already covered them in a number of different ways. <laughs> but um, I'd, we'd love to hear your, uh, your top three tips on, on a cloud first strategy, Dave, please. Yeah, number one, look at the requirements of the enterprise first. I can't stress that enough. And we have a tendency to go like, you know, people, you know, I'm speaking at a conference this week, and I think that a number of people will come up to me asking the same question. You know, how should I move to cloud? You know, what are my requirements that need to be? And, uh, you know, what kind of cloud should I move to? Well, requirements really kind of dictates the solution. And, and I know that's something people don't want to hear. They want to hear a definite answer to a, a question they haven't asked, but that's not necessarily going to be... Um, intellectually honest in going forward. So look at your requirements first, then the technology solution will kind of pop up from there. Watch out for the cloud lock-in, even if you have a single provider. Um, so we're gonna walk down the aisles with lots of clouds, AWS and Microsoft and Google, Alibaba, things like that. So make sure that we not necessarily avoid lock-in, because I don't think we can do that, but we try to avoid it as much as we can. We, we look at it as an mitigated risk and we do a plan, in essence, to egress out of the system, what it's going to take in terms of money and time to move from one cloud provider to the other. And then finally, security, governance, and operations matters. I mean, I always say ops is really kind of where cloud, the cloud battle is won. You know, it's one thing I can develop a system, you know, turn it over to operations, and, you know, whether it runs or not, you know, in a week or two weeks or, you know, even two years is going to dictate the success of that, of that system. It's not my ability to kind of get it out, out of the gate. So we have to understand that these sorts of operational challenges are going to have to be baked into our cloud computing solution, and they're the way in which we win the game. Great top three tips. Thanks, Dave. And thanks for being part of the C-Suite show, as always. Always a pleasure, man. <laughs> Excellent. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's C-Suite show. You can catch other C-Suite shows as well, so check out the playlist in the description box below and on the channel. Uh, you can find Dave on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. There's some graphics on the screen right now. We're also on Instagram, so come and join us on Instagram as well for some fun pictures and stuff that we do on Instagram, all sorts of things. And we've got a back catalogue of the shows on there as well, so uh, come and check those out. Um, yeah, Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share this channel and videos with your friends and your colleagues. And remember also to watch out for next week's video. Thanks for watching.